I'd like to uh, start the Peters Township Planning Commission meeting of May 11th. Could we have a roll call, Seth? Mr. Smith is not present. Mr. Magrino is not present. Mr. Cartophilus? Here. Mr. Mills is currently not here. He may come in late. Mr. Wiley? Here. Mr. Selepis? Here. And Ms. Corbel is not present. Okay, we have our the minutes in our binder. Could uh, we either uh, make changes to those minutes or can I entertain a motion to approve? I have a correction. Um, okay. On page 10 of 14, in the uh, third paragraph, last sentence where it says uh, start the, la the second to last line consulting engineers review turn lane warrants are not met it should be it says bet it should be met on east mcmurray okay so. with that change can i uh, hear a motion to approve uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, revised minutes i'll second Okay, those in favor say aye. Aye. And moving on, do we have any reports or correspondence that's not in the docket? No. I see we have a site plan filed for review. Yeah, I wanted to bring Planning Commission up to speed on that. Um, we have received site plan application for the Waterdam Galley multifamily apartment project uh, near the intersection of Waterdam Road and Galley Road. We have been working with uh, an applicant on this project for quite some time now, but we've gotten to a point where they predominantly have an ordinance compliant project. We sat down with them early last week, had a all hands on deck review meeting. Our consulting engineer on the project, LSSE, sent out their review letter just yesterday. Um, we'll be receiving revisions to that. We may be in front of planning commission next month for a uh, Consideration, and that would just be site plan approval by planning commission. It would not go to council for approval. So, do you remember the applicant's name on that? It's Al Nyer. Oh, yeah. Al Nyer would be the developer on that project. Uh, proposed for a 181 apartment units, combination of one and two bedrooms, approximately a 50-50 split between those two. There weren't any three bedrooms. No that? three bedroom units proposed at this time. So, just FYI. Thank you. And is the uh, agenda the same as uh, we have in front of us? Yes, it is. Are there any audience comments um, that have nothing to do with our business tonight? And hearing none, we, have, we do not have any old business. So let's move on to our new business, starting with first is a recommendation. And this is the Township Zoning Ordinance Amendment, Conservation Residential CR Overlay, and the Township Zoning Districts Map. So, as you may recall, on February 20th of this year, we held a workshop between Planning Commission and Council to talk through a number of different issues, but uh, the predominant portion of that conversation was focused around the Township's conservation residential overlay. Um, during that workshop, it was the consensus of Planning Commission and Council to propose a ordinance amendment to lift the conservation residential overlay from properties that either have not been developed or had not filed a preliminary plan application um, at the time of uh, the ordinance being de designated a pending ordinance or time of ordinance designation. Um, at the February 27th, 2023 council meeting, staff provided Township Council a proposed ordinance to this effect. Um, at that meeting, they designated June 5th of 2023 to be the public hearing for this proposed amendment, uh, potentially to take action after that meeting on the same night. Um, the, the length of time between those events does just give staff time to send out notifications and post placards on properties. We just need time to work through our public approval process or public notification process. Um, in tonight's docket is the proposed ordinance and the map associated with it, which would be the new township zoning district map. Um, a number of parcels would be left in the conservation residential overlay uh, because they've either been developed under the overlay or have applied for complete preliminary plan application um, as of February 27th of earlier this year. Um, it is now Planning Commission's opportunity to provide council with a recommendation ahead of this public hearing scheduled for June 5th of this year. And this, uh, this is the map you're talking about? That, yes, Dave, the map you have in your hand there would be the new township zoning district map 
if this ordinance amendment were to be adopted. And the changes on this are strictly for the CR. There's no mixed residential Correct. Change. Tonight's conversation is solely focused around the conservation residential overlay. So this is the bef this is the after. This is the after, and the map on screen now in red shows the parcels to be removed with this pending ordinance. for from us is uh, is a recommendation to move it to, to council yeah and I, I, I do believe we have members of the public here tonight that would like to yeah. to comment on this but yes all we're looking for tonight is for a recommendation to council okay well uh, I'm ready for any comments from the public so let's start with <laughs> Steve good evening it's Stephen Victor from Victor Wetzel Associates is this a laser uh, no that's the remote but I have the laser right here Steve if you'd like uh, I know what we're looking at. I'm pointing to uh, right here. Sorry, get around. <laughs> right here, be the area that. Okay. That's the area that I would like to discuss with you. Um, yeah, for the record, I'm Stephen Victor, Victor Wetzel Associates, and I'm here on behalf of the Lutz family. Uh, they own uh, 30 acres at uh, 446 McCombs uh, Road. And uh, I have presented a letter to you that outlines that. So as you understand, the family has owned the property for over 68, uh, over 60 years. Uh, this is now the third generation as uh, Everett, McCall, Everett Lutz Jr. passed away. This is generation two. And so generation three would like to now move from having it be more agricultural to being uh, available for development. And so they engaged me to do a development study. And as part of that, I came to the conclusion that uh, the best way to develop this property would be under your prior RCD zoning. And so we're here to ask if that CD zone, if this particular property could be added CR, to that. CR, thank you, CR. Thank you for correcting me. Uh, the uh, conservation residential could be uh, included in this property. Uh, with just a couple of quick slides, if we could, just to show you some background as to why I came to those conclusions. start with the existing conditions. Uh, the next one. Sorry, give us one second. second. To pull. We didn't have the existing conditions plan ready. We only had the two options. So. <laughs> okay. Ten seconds for if, some. If, okay. We'll, just wait we'll have it just in a second. Seconds. Yeah. Basically, if you look at the property, you'll see that it is an area that has some elements of steep slopes uh, in pockets of it. It has some area of woodlands and it has a stream running through it. Uh, added to that, the township has desired to have an interconnecting road uh, from McCombs up to the Sandy Crest cul-de-sac street for purposes of public safety. And uh, so with that in consideration, uh, the McCombs Road is along the bottom, down in here. Uh, currently today, there are four residential houses that this family owns on the property today. Uh, we have, and here is Shady Crest Court up on top. We have wood, the uh, orange color would be steep sloped areas. Uh, very steep slopes would be the fuchsia color. And the yellow color would be uh, uh, moderately steep slopes uh, within those areas. Uh, with the prime development areas being here and here on the property. Uh, the next slide, please. If we were to create an interconnecting road between Shady Crest to McCombs, as requested by the township, and then place on it uh, 
100 foot wide lots to meet the ordinance requirement for the uh, LD zoning district. This is what the plan would look like, and you can see other than the uh, open space down around the detention facility, uh, all of the property is just parceled off for individuals. And in order to get the street under this design, we have extensive grading here, grading such so steep here that these little blocks become double loaded. So the houses would have to be on the high side. So uh, then it just means this long cul-de-sac here becomes single loaded through it. So it becomes a very inefficient design and it's, I think, more intrusive to the land itself by the extent of the grading. Some of that is, is sort of forced upon us by the interconnecting street that the township desires. Next slide. So, sorry, is it right? To give me a perspective, I, I'm familiar with McCombs, which goes, I guess Venetia Road would be off to the right. Yes. To the north or to uh, on the top of the screen is Bebop Road over on the opposite side yes, of that yes. Yes. Shady, Shady Crest connects to Timber Lake and Timber Lake goes out to Bebop. Where the lakes are along Bebop. Yes. And okay. it's, it's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, is that the because of where the fire department is located and emergency services, that in order, in order to make an emergency call over here, they have to go all the way down to Venetia, come back, come over. And so the township is desiring this interconnection for uh, public services, public safety. So if we were to uh, be allowed to have the LD uh, uh, with a CR overlay, then we looked at uh, a slightly different configuration on the interconnect road with a cul-de-sac coming out here. Uh, lots, uh, the required lot size is 75 feet now in the uh, CD overlay. So these lots would be uh, one quarter acre, 75 feet wide in compliance with that. What we wanted to demonstrate is that with this type of layout, we get significant areas of open space. In fact, 61% of the property has the potential to be put into common open space uh, and uh, just find it a uh, more attractive way by which to develop the property and less intrusive. Are the Lutz, the existing Lutz family residences going to be abandoned or do they remain? Dan Lutz, one of the sons, lives here. Okay. So that would remain. Uh, the father, mother's house was over here, uh, and they have a rental house here and another rental house here. We're envisioning that those three uh, would be taken out mm -hmm. uh, and raised, and new housing would come in on that. Uh, the other heir, uh, Dan Lutz's brother, lives out of state, and so he has no interest. Uh, uh, on the property. So. Again, we think that this is a great opportunity to utilize what we uh, thought was a good way to approach land planning and would very much appreciate it if you would include this property in the uh, CR overlay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Introduce yourself, and there might be something there to sign your name on. I okay. Think. Uh, my name is Donald Graham uh, with Dylan McCandless, King Coulter and Graham. I'm here tonight representing Venetia Hills LLC. Um, so Venetia Hills, that's the portion of their property that's zoned under the uh, CR overlay, but they also own the piece immediately to the east of that. If you can point that out. Uh, which is a the total of the entire site is about 300 and uh, 36 acres so it's a fairly significant piece of property um, just a little bit of background um, uh, my client uh, actually with the help of mr. Victor and with the help of uh, a colleague of mine Bob Bloomling spent years working with the township on the zoning ordinance that ultimately went in place that I think created the uh, 
the mixed residential portion of this property because the majority of the property is in that mixed residential district with a little bit down below in some village districts. Um, uh, as a result, the zoning came in with the CR overlay and the MR overlay. Um, following that up, they got with Mr. Victor and developed a master plan for the property, have been talking with developers in the interim, and have been relying on the zoning as it is today to get to the density levels and implementation of the master plan that they had proposed in accordance with the ordinances that were there. The only thing that slowed this project down is there is a significant traffic improvement required at the intersection of Venetia and Bebout. Um, uh, and I mean significant. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very expensive project and finding a way to make the project work and pay for the project is something that has been somewhat of a challenge over the last few years. Um, our concern is that if you eliminate the conservation residential from this, that you're going to further reduce the density of the, the, the project, which is going to further constrain the financial feasibility of building out the rest of the property because of the intersection improvements that are required in Venetia and Bebop. Um, so I'm here tonight to request that you consider preserving the con at least the conservation residential on this property. I mean, if the board were inclined, I mean, if it also got included in the mixed residential or added to the mixed residential, that is certainly something that, that would be more than satisfactory to us. But having it go all the way back to the LD creates significant problems because we'll lose several lots in this. Um, so I'm here tonight to ask you to uh, include in your recommendation some consideration of preserving the conservation residential on this piece of property. Okay. So I'm a little bit confused. You're just talking about the one that's like, I don't know, I, can, can you zoom in on which one so we know what we're yeah. talking about? I'm not you sure. Point you want me to walk to it? Walk right to it. There. That, that one there. Yeah. And which other property are you talking? You referred to so another one, which... Go right to the, to the right of that. That white it's, space. Yeah, okay. all the way down to Venetia Road and actually across Venetia okay. to the railroad Okay, that's what confused me. I thought you were talking about the other one that's that's checkered there. No. Okay. No. So now I understand. So, so yeah, you can see the mixed residential um, that's the in orange, and then the, the hash, and then the blue, and actually it goes into a portion of that. Okay. I don't know if that's rose or red or what color you want to call that. <laughs> well, that's fine. I just was confused about which specific one you were referring to for yeah. keeping it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments tonight on this? Subject? Okay. <clears throat> Seth, what, what latitude do we have on this? We're just we're just looking at this right here, aren't we? You're looking at this right here. Um, and you're making a recommendation to council. Obviously your recommendation is not finite. It does not have to be what council does. You know, in these conversations about keeping properties in the overlay, we're pulling approximately 115 parcels out of the overlay. I would need to have a conversation with the solicitor about if we were to entertain keeping any in the overlay, does that, does that become a substantive change where we need to go back through the notification and amendment process, or does keeping a handful of parcels not necessarily necessarily be a substantive change and can we continue with our June 5th public hearing if council were to decide to do the same um, I'm not saying you're not, you know giving you what your recommendation would be but I think there may be an opportunity to keep a couple parcels in the overlay and not necessarily have to go all the way back through the, the public notification process essentially grandfathering them well, no basically revising this proposed amendment to, you know, highlight a couple parcels that would retain the conservation residential okay. overlay zone. Yeah. I mean, I just think that what we did in our workshop and all the stuff that we did was say, we're drawing the line today. If you didn't get something in, you didn't get something in. And we were going to look at stuff as a, on a case by case basis and say, is the terrain rough? Like, uh, Mr. Wetzel pointed out, and, and you know, what is exactly the parameters that would make you say, okay, let's turn this back or let's approve this as a conservation residential, looking at 
here's the check boxes I can't have to hit. I can't hit these three out of five, so that's what makes it a difficult to develop on site. <clears throat> no. And then we, just like somebody comes in for a variance, we're, they're coming in for a zoning change, basically, and then, yeah, unfortunately, didn't do anything about it till now, but that's, you know, that's, that's, what, that's what our whole discussion was at the workshop, too, was to look at things on a case-by-case -case basis, and the reason that we thought that we were originally going to down the path of the conservation residential district was mm -hmm. to allow challenging and restrictive sites to have another option for development rather than staying in the LD. And that's exactly what this whole, um, you know, repealing thing is, mm -hmm. is all intended to do. So I think that, you know, for us to make a decision here or make a recommendation on that, we really don't have enough information to say yay or nay, and I think it would have to go through that process. And, and yeah, I just don't know what that process really yeah, looks right neither now, do I. Ted, because I think the conversation in that workshop was, well, let's develop that criteria and process as part of the comprehensive plan in mm -hmm. 23, and we've got quite a ways away before we're really in the thralls of that. Um, you know, just as, as my own opinion, uh, looking at these two groups of properties, if we were to establish criteria, I think they would probably be one of the ones that I would think would be great candidates to stay in the overlay, um, especially that one that would facilitate a connection from Timberlake to Macombs. Um, you know, whatever we can do to make that the, the best project possible um, while obtaining that connection, I think is very valuable. And the portion down there near Venetia Bebout. You know, not really even thinking about the intersection itself. It's some very challenging property there. There's some some hills and valleys and ridge lines that make that very challenging to develop. And um, you know, saying we've got to put half acre lots up there, I think would, would be difficult. But you know, th those are my thoughts. Yeah. And and you know, that's I, probably one of the most underdeveloped portions of the township in that region. Sure. Especially yes, you're you're right, Conrad. Mm -hmm. But there. And we've got you know 300 plus acres there that's kind of being held back by one intersection for the time being. Um, yeah, Ted, I just I just don't know what that process looks like moving forward. No, I understand. Bringing and properties I, back in the overlay. To me, I'm just concerned. Like if if you know, and nothing against these guys. I appreciate you coming forward and definitely bringing it to our attention. Those two properties because we don't know exactly which ones are the challenging ones, but. I'm just thinking, if we do this now, you know, and include that with this quick uh, request, you know, is the next thing going to be somebody else coming forward and say, why didn't I? Why don't you do mine? Why didn't I get that opportunity? Mm -hmm. Why? Blah blah blah. And it's well, these gentlemen stepped up, and I get that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but there still is the avenue. Come on up. Yeah, sure. Yeah, please. I think the, I know the reason that I am coming at this time to step up was, first of all, Mr. Lutz died in February and the family was nowhere near ready to roll on this. Mm -hmm. But my understanding of the process that was going to be in was that there would be this opportunity for tonight and on June 5th that we could come and uh, present various parcels that if we can prove to it that that would be okay to do so. Uh, so we didn't feel on our side feel like we were coming in at the last minute. We thought this was the system that was supposed to be in place. However, you've said something that sounded interesting to me and I don't know why it can't work this way if you're uncomfortable with just making a recommendation this evening, is that you're keeping the uh, CR overlay and can it not be applied to any parcel after the June 5th, uh, or whenever the council takes their vote, uh, to come in on an individual basis and just rezone it yeah. as, as an individual parcel? Yeah. Just like I could come and request a commercial rezoning or a MD zoning, I could come back and request specifically for this parcel yeah. and go through the rezoning process? You certainly could, Steve, because the zoning district itself is not going away because there's properties that were developed under it, and we don't want to make them entirely non-conforming developments. Um, I think the goal to go through that process was to 
help guide the decision makers with some quantitative criteria mm -hmm. to make decisions on whether or not property should be in the overlay. Um, we have not identified what those metrics would be, um, but I think this, what you're describing would be essentially how that process would work. Is like, we've identified these criteria, let's make a request for rezoning, we check boxes one, two, and three, maybe it's a good application, let's go in front of Planning Commission and Council. Yeah. Well, being the optimist that I am, I could have say I think the door hasn't closed. It's just maybe open through another way. So uh, we'll sort of keep, we'll watch how it progresses, but uh, uh, you might see us back here uh, filing for a specific application in the future. Okay. Again, thank okay, you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Yeah, and again, just as you uh, spoke that the Lutz family um, thought this was going to be the future, so did we. Um, a couple years ago, but you know, being in a fluid township like we are, um, we found after this began the uh, sort of outpouring, perhaps, or mm -hmm. the public coming back and going, "Time out here! This isn't what we <laughs> signed up for." So um, that's what's good about our our planning department. Uh, they listen to the residents, and and this is a result of it, probably. Um, Having said that, I, uh, I don't want to take up too much more time on, on uh, what we thought would happen and what we thought would continue. Um, you guys have any, any no, more comments on I, it? I just said what my thoughts were. Yeah. Nope. Well, I'd be, uh, if there's no more comments, I'd like to entertain a, an action motion on this uh, particular agenda item. So, Seth, are we, we are just proposing that this, uh, I guess, recommendation be pushed. You would be to making a recommendation to council whether or not this specific ordinance amendment should be adopted. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. All right. And just to be clear, there's still going to be a public hearing because yes. right. part of this is the public hearing on June 5th. Correct. Which obviously you gentlemen will be there and so will council. And some of our members perhaps missed tonight. So, if so you I, would. Good. I'd like to make a motion that the Planning Commission recommend uh, approval of the zoning district maps amendment per the uh, May 2nd um, memo and the ordinance draft included and map included therein. I'll second. Okay, we've had a motion and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Our second piece of new business is, uh, is also a recommendation for the Newcastle preliminary plan on Just About Road and Sienna Trail. I'm going to turn this one over to Jim here in a second, but I just want to provide a little bit of clarity. The very first sentence we have in the summary, and I should have caught this in the uh, report, references an April 13 preliminary plan application. We did receive preliminary plans on April 13, but we have received a complete application much further in advance than that, in advance of that February 27th date of a pending ordinance. So what you'll see tonight is a project utilizing the conservation residential overlay. We had a complete preliminary plan application before the pending ordinance was proposed. So I apologize for that, for any confusion, but Jim's gonna take over on this one. Uh, have that. Well, the township received an application for preliminary approval for the Newcastle development. Um, planning department staff previously reviewed the plans for compliance with the township ordinances and the applicants submitted revised plans, the ones provided for you based on our comments. Uh, Gateway Engineers has also conducted their own review. I have a couple copies here in case anyone wants to check those out. Um, the property is 21.3 acres in size. It's situated between Just About Road and Siena Trail. An unnamed tributary of Rush Run traverses the property roughly parallel to Just About Road, and a hill with a crown just west of the property line dominates the area of the property south of this watercourse. The southern portion of the property is wooded with several wetlands and streams, and elevation increases towards the southern boundary and Siena Trail. 
a people's gas line traverses the northern half of the property, which the applicant proposes to relocate as part of the development. The development overall consists of a single phase, 24 lot subdivision on the site, sorry, with new access to Just About Road and Sienna Trail. 21 of the lots will have access along proposed drawbridge lane, which connects Just About Road and Sienna Trail. The remaining three lots will front Just About Road in the northern northwestern portion of the property. Proposed lots range in size from 0.24 acres to 0.63 acres with an average size of 0.39 acres. The property is located within the township CR overlay district and stormwater flowing from all proposed lots fronting drawbridge lane will be directed into storm sewers. Those fronting just about road will have stormwater controlled via on-lot sumps. Four pairs of inlets are present along the length of drawbridge lane. Storm sewers will drain two proposed detention facilities within the development. One of these is located directly under a West Penn power line and within its 100 foot easement. The proposed stormwater detention bases are to ultimately be owned and maintained by the township. Culvert is also proposed under drawbridge lane on the northern end of the development to allow the unimpeded flow of the aforementioned unnamed tributary brush run. Sanitary sewer service for the development will be facilitated through an extension of Pierce Township Sanitary Authority main line that is initially to be installed as part of the proposed Tuscany 2 project on the opposite side of Just About Road. The development will, is proposed to comprise a total of 10.18 acres of open space or 48% of the overall size. This exceeds the minimum requirement of 25% of the gross acreage. The majority of the open space will be part of what is indicated as open space A on the plan and can provide and comprise 6.01 acres along the western side of development. The geotech report for the proposed development has been prepared by ACA Engineering and has been reviewed by the township's consulting engineer. Preliminary architectural elevations for the three mile homes are provided in the plan and are shown on the slides here as well. Planning staff are recommending the preliminary plan be approved subject to 25 conditions, most of which are typical approvals from outside agencies and the correction of minor errors on the plan, and they are all listed in the staff report previously provided for you. Jim, of these 25, are there any that are rather important I mean they're all important but is there any that really the ones that jump, out? the ones that jump out to me are ensuring that the uh, West Penn power approves of the plan to have the stormwater management facility under their within their easement um, the ordinance requires that plans for the culvert be provided as part of the plan uh, the applicants indicated that those will be as part of the final plan and there's one more. Oh, um, ordinance doesn't allow grading within three feet of property lines. The current plans do show grading within three feet of those property lines, and we want to ensure that we keep those up, all grading on the development action itself. Seth may have other conditions on there that he thinks are. Just no, I, I think Jim hit the high points. You know, the grading within three feet of the property line that can be further refined with the final plan. I have no serious concerns about that at this point, but I think it's it's good to document it. So there's only one gas line on there? Because well, you said people, and then I saw an Equitrans somewhere. So I there's a, the there's an Equitrans line, I believe that that's just a transport line that goes through the property. Where is that? That's um, on the western edge of the property, kind of right along the southern boundary. It runs along there. Oh, I see here. Okay. Western boundary. Thank you. Yep. Um, or if it's this way, it's this way. Yep. Yep. I called out the people's line just now because that will be relocated as part of development. And, and where is that? Comes in here, uh, comes up. It's this thin dash line, comes up, comes down, and goes like this. That's current? It's current. And it's, it's basically a service line that's just doing it. So they'll just come in and keep this portion and then just come up, go along our street, mm. and go out. And go back. So this it's not a, a big deal and they'll because we're providing new housing they will uh, do the realignment for us so so Kim you said one of them was West Penn Power or something about West Penn Power which there what is number a was it right here. no I mean on this uh, 
Was it West Penn Power? Yeah, it's on the second page on the back. Oh, there it is. Okay. Condition 25 has a couple yeah. sub conditions yeah. with it. It's a, <laughs> regarding verification from outside agencies. What, what's the existing condition of this right now? It's just, just open. Yeah, mostly field. vacant. Yeah, there's no, there's nothing on there now. Now, no structures, but it, uh, last time I walked it, the center core was uh, uh, cornfields. <laughs> I don't know if it's cornfield today, but when I walked this a while back, and then uh, along just about road, uh, Simmons were had a whole bunch of tomatoes growing, vegetables growing there again a couple years ago. I don't think they're doing that still. So. Yeah, th this seems this property. It's haphazard. It gets planted, and then there's years that go by, there's no planting, and then all of a sudden, like you said, corn appears. Maybe it's a the, crop rotation plant. Yeah. Are any of the high tension wires um, encroaching on any of the lots that you show? The easement comes through like this. The actual wires, here's the tower coming through like this and so this little corner right here is in the easement but it's not under the wire so you can see the structures are not near the wire mm -hmm. okay so, it's so none of the properties shown are under a wire correct okay correct as to the comment about the three feet uh, when you look at the drawings the property line going around here is relatively thick and that's just because of the weight of the CAD line. If you zoom into it and look close, you know, you can see that we are complying with the three feet. So it's certainly not an issue for us. We just need to have it and be in more detail. So zoom in for the, everybody to see that we're in compliance. So it's not, a, not an issue for ours. Where's Tuscany 2 going to be in relation? Is it? Tuscany 2 is this that, property, okay. and the entrance to Tuscany 2 is here, so that we could have a, I want to say 300, 330 foot of offset between the two intersections. Uh, we couldn't line up with this one because of where the detention facility needed to be, and so that we then offset, So, and that was part of the staff discussion early on to get into the project. And we looked at doing a plot because when Tuscany 2 first came to us it was like here's Tuscany 2 Newcastle might come shortly after so we tried to tee them up in both locations and trying to tee up Tuscany 2 with the Newcastle that high tension tower was in the way so there really wasn't an opportunity to get the both of them yeah, lined right up there. perfectly it was, yeah. it was unfortunate but we tried right we tried but the, the intersection of Siena and just about is a Y. Is that the one with the stop sign? Siena and just about, yes. It's a Y intersection. It's funky, but as, Tusk, as part of Tuscany 2, we're working to get that totally realized. So, okay. So yeah. that's Tuscany 2 is going to Tuscany 2 is handling that, correct. Okay. Not Newcastle. Not Newcastle. Gotcha. The, the reason for that is Tuscany 2's uh, ownership goes along just about all the way down through that area. So, uh, it was up to Tuscany too to make that change. Yes. Okay. And that's I know we had there the the page. But I forgot Sorry. what it was. Sorry, Conrad. Yeah. That that intersection that you're referring to is off the top of the page there. Is yeah. that correct? Right. Correct. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Thank you. I I was trying to get my bearings on that as well, so I'm glad you brought that. It's okay. Cool. Jim, elaborate on the what, traffic calming signage. Is that just a posted speed limit, or more or less? Yeah, just okay. usually it's like a warning sign. It's traffic calming zone ahead, and a speed limit sign, monument sign, showing an entrance to development can also be considered part of traffic calming measures. Certainly, in other developments, it may include a boulevard style entrance or a big center island, but that's not anything we're really looking at in this development. Is the lane narrower than regulations? No. And the need for visitor parking um, is up. because there's just not enough room in the driveways? We found with newer development, Steve likes to chuckle because he <laughs> hates me for this regulation, but um, we found in some of our newer developments that, you know, 
while there may be enough room in driveways most of the time when people want to have parties or events, there's just not enough space and we get a lot of on-street parking. So having a couple guest parking spaces distributed out through development um, should prove helpful in alleviating those situations. Because they don't look like full spaces. They'll still be out into the... They'll be the off lane, the right. They'll, they'll be off the cartway, but they'll be somewhat on-street parking, but off the cartway. Basically, what we've done is widen the street mm -hmm. in the area here uh, at the CBU. So, By how much? Uh, is it like eight feet? feet? Nine feet? Oh, yeah. So it is a full... Yeah. So it's a full way. parking. It's a full it's parking. Parallel parking that off the yeah. line. That, that makes it different. Almost a full lane. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And these little yeah. pictures, it's, it doesn't it look, can, it doesn't look it pretty can be Right, it's hard to tell. So we yeah. disperse them. Wait, while you're, while you're up there, so that space between the last two houses there and the lower right corner, that's to tie into the other property in the future, possibly, or no? no this is, there's a, a drainage way okay. that comes through here, another drainage way that comes through here, I gotcha. and they come together down here and join in with this one coming this way. So this is open space just because there's some wetlands and a, and a drainage way. What feature? Mm -hmm. The, it's, at one point, there was talk of having this go this way uh, to the south, but the gentleman who bought this piece of property put one single family house on it was never going to be developed. So that that then redirected this over, and the township wanted us to have the connection to uh, Sienna the Sienna Trail. Trail. Steve, since the elevations have already been proposed, and I'm just curious, has the builder or builders been selected? No. No. Uh, the developer on this is Benjamin Marcus Holmes. He provided us with the sort of typical houses that, that if he chooses to be the builder in here, that's what he would do. So, so it's not final that Benjamin Marcus will be the builder. They're the developer. They, they may build on some of the lots, but not exclusively. Correct. Hasn't been fully decided. There's been some interest, uh, some others wanting to uh, get a piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a, uh, a guess on range for a build, after the house is built out? Any guess? Like price? Price, yeah. Five to seven. That's 500 all. to 700,000. Including lot. Yes. Yeah. Because it's a 75 foot wide, but Seeing that it's Peter's, a five hundred thousand dollar house quickly becomes a seven hundred thousand. So it's a it's a very desirable place unless you're the one buying the house. <laughs> they always say we start at five, but then you add a bathroom and it's six hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is an extra. You're right. <laughs> Would you like kitchen countertops? <laughs> I'm going to take a minute to ask, is there any audience comments tonight? We just received a if you do, yep. you, yeah. you would need to come forward, please, and uh, sign in if there's a register at either of the podiums and state your name you and where you live. This, That's why we, uh, we want you, you to just sign this paper? Just sign write your name. Write your name and address, please. Thank you. Okay. Patricia Crentis. We live at 361 Sienna Trail. And um, where the house, where the road is going to go right by our property. We just, it was just confirmed for us today. We received a letter on Saturday, and I was telling Seth it was addressed to residents. It didn't even have our names on it. And I just found that to be very unkind. And we received a letter that's going to change our lives. Is your I've, house uh, depicted on the map? If you could point it out to us, please. Okay. I've lived in that house for 62 years. That was my family home. My husband's been there for 34 years with me. Um, it's just, I'm 
I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say. It was just a, a shock. Uh, we had no warning. Um, even the letter we got, it didn't say anything about a road. And he, we looked on the plans online, and my husband said, it looks like there's going to be a road right beside us. So I, I talked with Seth today, and he was very kind. Um, and you're talking about that people's gas line that goes through our yard. We have Columbia gas, but that main line, we've asked for years for that to be moved because we wanted to have put an extension on our house. We were told we couldn't do that because of the gas line. Uh, we don't have water or sewage in our neighborhood. We have well water and septic, like, like the forgotten neighborhood. Um, but for all these years, that was okay, I think, with all of us because it wasn't being developed. So it was like the lesser of two evils. But now, I mean, if this is what's going to happen, we think that we should be included in water and sewage. It just seems only fair because this is going to affect our property values. And, and I suspect that all this construction could affect our wells, too. What's um, the size of your lot? We have out. almost an acre. Okay. Uh, I know our one neighbor gets his water trucked in currently. Um, like I said, we weren't prepared to talk. We were just coming to listen. But uh, And Steve, are the utility infrastructures going to come in along the uh, opposite side of the street from where their house is? We'll have a house here. And so we'll be extending the sanitary sewers to here so they certainly could be available. Uh, if they desire that, we'll just make sure there's an easement to get to their property. And the water line would run the street all the way through, so the water would be here. And so it would just be a matter of them uh, connecting uh, or extending the, the line through theirs, depending upon the, the authority. Uh, and what about, you were saying something about that trajectory of the people's line getting changed. Would that have any effect on where it's going near their place? I don't know where. It goes right through the center of our yard. Yeah, it comes like this to your property, I believe. Something like that. It's it, within, yeah. is it 12 inches of the corner of our house? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. And they said they don't know how it was ever allowed. Um, well, we, when we have our discussions with the gas company, people's we can offer to them to maybe come up here and get that situation. We weren't aware of what it, the condition was as it leaves, but maybe we could have some discussions there. Uh, maybe something else that could happen, Seth, that we have an excess of open space. Mm -hmm. Maybe what this road right away could do is come over and we widen out the road right away so that their house has frontage and where that would be important is that they can tap directly into the water. Mm -hmm. If they have to grab the water here, they'll have to extend it the full length of their frontage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where maybe here it can tap this way. So just a subtle little thing that make it easier and more convenient to, if you wish to choose to tap into sewer and water. Thank you. Yeah. And so let's set up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Patty was in my office earlier today. We had, an, I think, we had a, we had a good conversation. Yeah, she was very, very nice, very um, kind. I just had had a chance to really talk with Steve about some of her concerns, and so I, you know, I think we've. He's pretty good. Brought all those up. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Well, I, <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Yeah. 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 That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got the the preeminent the design there. Thank if you. the township is willing to allow us to yeah. just expand the road right away in that way, uh, and I don't think by doing that will create side yard setback issues. I think we're okay there. Yeah, property lines where it is anyways. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And we also appreciate well, you came up. We also appreciate you coming up and speaking because see what see what a nice change you may you may get out of this. Yeah. Yeah. By speaking Thank you. Hopefully things work out. It yeah. just came as such a shock. I, I'm, oh, I'm I can't sorry imagine. for the tears. But I can't imagine. Thank, thank yeah. you for listening. Absolutely. For sure. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, thanks for coming forward. Does that does that change or add another condition? Or I really don't just a off the record. I really don't discussion. think it would, okay. Conrad. I think you know these are issues that we just we recognize. They're that we byproducts of the development. Correct. And okay. We can refine these as we refine the design. Very good. Yeah. yeah this is preliminary plan, so we do have to come back for final. Yep. Yeah. Oh. You got to be near the mic. That's all right. Yeah. This is. Yeah, we want to get it, we want to get it recorded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these are the preliminary plans, and so. 
any of those sorts of details relative to sewer and water line extensions and connectivity can all be worked out at the time of final plans. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Hopefully something good comes out of that. With I, th I think I think we have solutions for it. Uh, I don't see any reason why uh, we can't at this time. Yeah, that would be yeah. awesome. Doesn't mean they have to tap in. That's that's a whole other issue. But if if it as long as we're building it to there, let's make it available to them. Sure. Anything more, gentlemen? No, I don't know. I, I don't have anything else to add. I'm, I, I entertain an action motion if possible. I'll make a motion that the, the Newcastle development preliminary plan be approved as outlined in staff's memo dated May 4th, 2023, uh, to include the 25 uh, recommendations outlined in the uh, memo. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 We have a unanimous uh, motion passed there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, we'll, guys. We'll Good luck. to work with Seth, and I would suggest that, too. We, we will probably deal with you. We'll just deal with Seth, and, and he can make you aware of what we're doing. So, and he'll look after you ready. We appreciate it very much. Okay. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Thank you, Stephen. All right. Is there any other items that we'd like to talk about, Jim, or anything? Yeah, so as I'd mentioned, um, we did receive the site plan submittal for the Waterdam Galley Apartments. Um, two upcoming dates to bring to your attention. Uh, the special exception for the senior living facility on East McMurray was tabled, not tabled, they requested an extension last month. Um, coming out of that conversation with Planning Commission, they needed some additional time to work through some issues. So that's currently scheduled for next Tuesday night, May the 16th. They have refined the design, um, made some pretty significant changes, but I, I think they're making some positive momentum here. Um, so we'll see what the outcome is Tuesday night. I don't think it really necessitated a, a, a reevaluation re by Planning Commission or a re-recommendation. They're still working within the initial recommendation, just trying to, to figure some things out. Uh, and of course, we have that June 5th public hearing for the conservation residential ordinance amendments. So the is that L9, gonna be is that going to be a, a four stories? No. So the apartment project, three stories. Four story would be a conditional use. They don't want to deal with the conditional oh, use process. Okay. That, Three stories, three-story garden-style walk-up apartments. As I mentioned, 181 units. Um, they're looking at a swimming pool, maybe some pickleball courts, some outdoor amenities. Um, you know, they've we did those the the changes we made to the mixed use act, or the mixed use activity district. Those did pass, and with those past amendments, they are a fully ordinance-compliant project. Um, they are moving full steam ahead at this point, working through some. Issues with the sanitary authority concurrently with the township, but at this point in time, I really don't see any showstoppers that would hinder this project severely. Okay, thank you. Yep. Anything from you, gentlemen? The June fifth meeting. We're here. Special meeting by council in this room. It's not a regular council meeting night, so they scheduled a special public hearing. For okay. So adjourn. Thank you. Thank you.